I'm just going to do a little quilting on this and see if I can get this foreground going. And I hate to admit it, but the first tree in some way might have been a move to cover up uh, an area that I didn't care for very much. And it's part of the reason why I'm not really sweating my mountains, my front mountains or my back mountains that much, because I know I'm going to put a very uh, powerful foreground element that goes up the whole side and will probably be at least about this wide. Um, my tree will probably be about this wide, um, like the width of my two hands almost. I have big hands for a woman. And, uh, you know, so it's going to cover up. And that's just the nature of the beast because we're, we're layering this. You know, I, I think I explained in one video that I come from an early love of collage where you overlap. And I always thought of this um, as collage in the beginning. Uh, and the book that I recommended in the Raw Edge Applique video was called Fabric Collage. And I think it's neat. I know a number of you have ordered that and have told me that you've ordered it. And I think that's just great. Because uh, when I contacted Rosemary and asked her permission to, to mention it in my video, uh, she was so nice and so generous and supportive. And uh, so I think it's awesome that some people are ordering those. It's a great book. And everyone that's ordered it has told me that they liked it, if, if they've gotten back to me about it. Okay, so you can see how these stitched parts uh, are a little narrower than the unstitched parts. You can see how this stitching just pulls it together. And I'm just trying to help that happen in as flat a fashion as possible because I'm really over quilting this, you know. This, this stitching right here is actually bigger than I would normally do on one of my pieces. And so I'm really affecting that. Uh, these layers are really shrinking up. Anyway, um, so I've got a loose piece in here. And I've just pulled off all my basting, and so I'm just going to not let it become a problem because I'm aware of it, you know, just like so many things. If you're aware of them, you can uh, keep them under wraps. Now, I've got this under here, and I don't dislike it that much, but I would not like it to just show like this. I think even black stitching would not tone that down enough. But what I might try to do is have it show under this. And so I'm going to make a little note of where it is in my approximate placement of that. And then I think what I want to do, I think I want to do some kind of stitching that kind of shows that in some places. So I like what I want to quilt here and quilt here. But leave that part to show. And again, this is the kind of thing that I'll do it and someone will tell me at some point that that looks like something and I think that's great because I don't you know I take pictures outside all the time and I tend to kind of study the landscape and I live in Montana where anytime you go anywhere you're really out in really beautiful scenery in town it's not so bad, but it's even better if you drive three miles out from your house. 
Um, anyway, I'm not exactly sure what I think I'm going to do here, but I think I'm going to try to do it. And then see, and you know, this, this piece comes to here, and so if I really didn't like what I had going, I really could just stop that there, or I could have it, anyway. I'm quilting this with variegated thread and it's sort of maroon and brown and maybe black and I'm generally going to follow my lines here. Uh, as I said before, I often don't but in this case I, I kind of follow them and I put this in as an inset, fairly small, uh, over me marking with chalk and then I looked at it and thought some people might actually want to see this. Uh, in its entirety, even though it sped up eight times uh, actual speed, because it's this kind of thought process where you're, you know, just looking for ideas on how to capitalize uh, on what you've got visually and experiment. And so this is provided here uh, for people that it will be helpful to. Ultimately, when this is finished, I actually like it quite a bit, and I'm glad that I did, uh, you know, what I envisioned from the beginning. Sometimes these things don't work out. It's always nice when they do, and when they don't work out, I just, you know, figure out something else to do. That might have been where the first tree came from. Uh, I also think it was just really wanting a foreground element, something strong, so that it wouldn't just be a distant landscape. I really wanted it to be a piece that was close up and far away. I do try to use the marking to give myself constant little reminders of where everything is and what needs to be sewn down to cover up the batting. And then after you know you plan on accomplishing that, uh, really anything that's going to make things visually interesting to you. I wanted to mention that for those who are interested in using uh, some of the many, many uh, gorgeous landscape fabrics that are out there, of course they have trees and sky and rocks and all kind grasses, all kinds of wonderful fabrics that you can just incorporate into a more realistic looking landscape. Here you can see me hopping and doing the different areas and this is when it saves a lot of time not to cut your thread and properly pull it up with each step. Remember that you want to start up and end when you hop with tiny little stitches the same way you do any time you start up in the middle of your quilt or end in the middle of your quilt so that over time you don't have that part pulling out and looking ratty. And then of course you need to remove, cut off all those threads. I like to do it sooner rather than later because they can snag on things and mess up your stitching down the road and so I try to clip that all off right away. See, there it is, I like it. All of this marking that I'm showing becomes less important if you don't mind your areas just sort of having a straight overlap or you know a less complicated overlap but I like to have a lot going on, a lot uh, visually to look at and have it be sort of complicated and that's why I take the time to mark and see what I've got underneath and uh, see those opportunities and I encourage you to do the same. A 
Of course, we're working from the same raw edge applique landscape protocol that we've been working on for the last few videos. And we're on the step where we're just stitching the remaining areas, filling out this mid-ground with these two green fabrics, or three fabrics actually. And, you know, you can do anything. I usually like to do parts of my quilt with more angular stitching and uh, kind of square puzzle piece looking stitching and different uh, boxes and things like that. But my tension is so poor right now and I'm, I actually need to figure out what's going on with my machine. And so I'm trying to not have so many sharp turns because you can see with the stitching that I'm doing right here that I've got more thread pileups on the top of my piece than I actually uh, feel is acceptable and so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to deal with those as we go forward. I'm trying to minimize it but anytime that you change direction with a machine that goes 2,000 stitches per minute the way mine does there's a chance for several stitches to happen at that point where you pause and switch directions and that's where you get that thread pile up. So I just wanted to remind you that in this video I'm not trying to cover everything I could possibly think of about raw edge applique. I'm trying to just talk about the piece that I'm making and why I'm doing what I'm doing and do it in a way that if someone wanted to make a landscape that was or wasn't similar to this, they would have a starting place to adapt these techniques on their own. And in that video, some highlights that might be of interest are reminders to uh, think about design principles as you go, uh, some ideas about the kinds of embellishments that can be added to a project at the end. And I talk a little bit about your attitude about your own sewing. I also go over some handy aids that you can use when doing raw edge applique, like the markers that I'm using and some other things that are helpful. All right, I thought it would be easier to tell how this looked if I just got this wet. And this will wash out in the laundry, but it's kind of nice to get a look at it. You can see the other fabric is showing through a little bit while it's wet. I'm just going to let this dry overnight and probably finish this video just with this much and then do the uh, foreground stuff later and I'll mark these later. So my husband and I both kind of think this would look better without the tree but I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know. This is a rough approximation. I could of course make it narrower or wider and I could have branches come off of it but it would cover unless I change the placement this mountain or maybe I could have it have a branch come this way anyway I'd love to know your opinion <laughs>